This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. I'm joined by Chris Eubank Jr., his father, Chris Eubank Sr., aka English. AKA? AKA, how do you want to be referred to? Controversy. Controversy. <laughs> Not controversy. 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 Um, how are you, Chris? Excellent, thank you. Um, ITV pay per view. Uh, we know your history with ITV. We know that. What is my history? Do you know my history? You said you know. What is it? I'm trying to sum it up to to get the best out of this interview. Without obviously people watching this will know about your history. I'm sure. Well, are you going to remind them or should I? Feel free. Well, in January. In fact, it was the 16th of January in 1990. I fought a fellow called Denny Cronin, and this was in a place called Splot in Cardiff, in a leisure centre. And there was a gentleman sitting in the audience called Trevor East, who was, at that time, the sports director of ITV. He vowed, after seeing me that particular night, the night of my conception, I was born in 1966, but my conception to the public was that particular night in Splot, Cardiff, where the peacock, the arrogance, the flair, the brilliance of everything that I've been studying in the gym for all those years uh, just flourished one, this one particular night. So, uh, you know, true to his word, we stayed on ITV for, I think, about four years. I had uh, 14 World Championship wins in that time on ITV. Um, obviously, uh, a couple of the greatest fights in the history of boxing shown in that time. Uh, one was obviously Nigel Ben, one, um, which was 18th of November, uh, 1990. And then it was Michael Watson and I, the 21st of September, 1991. In 93, October the 9th, Nigel Ben and I had um, uh, a rematch, uh, which was a draw. Um, that particular fight, by the way, actually uh, won an audience of some 17.5 million. Uh, ben 1 was 16 million, Watson 2 was 14 million. I had between 8 and 13 million viewers every fight. So effectively, um, there was a small satellite channel who wanted my services. They asked me to come into Sky. I did. I did an eight-fight deal, which was eight fights in one year. And it was called the World Tour. And Box Office was born from that particular day. Now, isn't it funny how things turn around? 22 years later, ITV, the greatest, biggest, um, most influential broadcaster in the United Kingdom, we are now back home with them and we're going to launch pay-per-view uh, early in 2017 with them. Um, so not only is it a rebirth, not only is Chris Eubank back, Junior, but it's also a rebirth because in the last 10 years I've been building Junior and he wasn't properly built a month ago. A month ago, I realized that this is a built fighter, built by another fighter, not a manager. He hasn't been built by a manager. He hasn't been built by a trainer. He hasn't been built by a promoter. Promoters uh, promote their fighters to make money. He's been built by another fighter, one with a severe frame of mind, which is why I achieved what I did in my career. And I am not only pleased with the outcome of his abilities, I am stunned. He is stunning. And for anyone who would say, well, what about the other fighters around the world in terms of comparing him? I can't say anything. What I have to do is let you see his abilities. Rather than them being blocked by others, you can now, um, or I've been able to, rephrase. Team Eubank has been able to now clear his path with ITV for him to have 
a fair fighting field. No swindling, no conning, no uh, bluster. The real deal, which is what Chrissy Ben Jr. is. I am, at this point, a proud father. I should tell you also that Junior isn't a good fighter. He's a great fighter. Uh, and it's his time now to prove that he can be a great champion. So I'm waiting for the questions, but you're not asking them. Perhaps it's because I'm not giving you the time to try, uh, or the, I'm not giving you the opportunity to ask, but I will tell you. Junior, this IBO championship that he's about to fight for, give him the ability to unify so we can get to the big guys quicker than going the route by way of being a contender. This, in my view, is clever. Why should it be done the promoter's way uh, uh, of, of old? This way is new and improved, as is Junior. Bring it. Bring it. You ready? Oh, yes. What would you say to those who, A, are questioning whether your son's fight on February the 4th is pay-per-view worthy, and also whether your son is fighting for a legitimate, recognised world title? What would you say? Well, to the last part of the question, um, the WBO, Middleweight Championship of the World, that I fought for in 1990, is still not regarded as a championship of um, substance. It was criticized severely then, much more so than the IBO is being criticized, yet it was responsible for two of the greatest fights in the history of boxing, Ben 1 and Watson 2. So, what? Bring it. What was the second part of your question? The first one was about whether this fight that's going on ITV pay-per-view is pay-per-view worthy. worthy. Well, when let me ask you a question. When you go into uh, a car showroom and you look at a Bugatti, you can't just take the keys and drive it out of there. You've got to pay them. Okay? It's supply and demand. You can't go into Selfridges or Harrods and go into the clothing department and say, well, I like that jacket. I'm taking it. No, you have to pay. Junior is a product. He has been worked on by Team Eubank for 10 years, okay? We have gone through trials, errors, tribulations, hardship, pressure. Now, now he is built. This is a product. Many of you may say, well, to talk about your son as a product is not really, it's not kind. Uh, I'm sorry. In the world of entertainment, he is a product, okay? And that product has to be paid for. Now, I don't say um, you shouldn't pay for it. I say, watch him once. Because if you watch him once, in fact, what you will do is probably not watch other fighters who are said to be great fighters. They speak a great fight, but they don't act a great fight. They don't fight a great fight. Junior, he has it all. And I'm not talking about talk. Leave the talking to me. Fighters, when it comes to fighting, I've seen nothing like him. So what I say is, watch him the once. Nothing wrong with that. Ten years of work. What? Whatever it costs. You know, it can be, you know, for your, if you're going to go to the theatre, you're going to buy a ticket for what? 25, 30, 30 pounds? You know, to have this in your home, a man who has been steered, he has been mentored, he has been parented, he has been trained, he has been advised, he's been counselled to fight in the most efficient way possible, which is to be brutal, brutal, precise, to use a speed and with that speed, a rate that other fighters cannot stay with. I watched the other day, Kovalov fight Ward. In the third round, I believe Ward th threw about 35 punches. That's why I say a light heavyweight, these guys can't live with Junior. They can't live with him because you can't live with someone who's, thro who's throwing three times as many, on average. And he can do this for 12 rounds. So the math, the math actually says he can't be beaten so long as he follows strategy. As I said, with a fighter like Golovkin, we know who he is. I believe Junior wrecks him. And now, 
we have a sure chance of making this fight happen, rather than leaving it to the, to the other guys. They let us down. They had a chance to be involved, but they couldn't deliver. So it comes back to who? The patriarch. I, with my team, Team Eubank, we have to do it. And will we? The one thing the ITV viewers know about me is that I am not a pretender. And if I am a pretender, at least call me the great pretender. Why? Because I'm always pushing to the edge and giving entertainment of the highest standard in this field of boxing. I can't say I know anything else about anything else. In other regards, I'm a fool. But when it comes to boxing, I will stand my ground with any man on the planet in terms of projection, in terms of philosophy, in terms of the craft, in terms of the skill, the breakdown. No. I'm not a behind the scenes man. You know, these trainers today, they are, they're fantastic. Yet I exist, yet I live, I breathe, I'm looking at you. But they're great trainers and they are great, but I exist, I have my input too. And I've been able to disseminate, I've been able to influence one fighter with it. And that's my son, Chrissy Ben Jr. And my methods may have been inhumane, and they may have been extreme, which is why I don't believe I can teach them to others. But underneath uh, my guidance, he has been able to withstand this insurmountable pressure that not only do I put upon him every day, consciously, but the unconscious pressure of being my namesake. He, you know, there are expectations of him. And this is supposed to squash him and make him shrink. But I've taught him how to use it to his benefit to make him come out, for him to use it to his ability, to his, uh, to his benefit. And that's why everybody wants to watch him. I know everybody wants to watch him who knows or loves boxing because I do. Even if it's Snapchat, even if it's a, a, a one minute video, I am compelled to watch this energy. So, okay, IFL, you are a boxing platform. Okay, so we here are, is we here are the boxing platform. And so, I, I think then it's right for me to tell the viewers who know about boxing, there was a fighter called James Tony. James Tony was a terrifying man. Put the fear of God into men before he fought them and took them, took them apart uh, in the same way. Terrible man. Junior has his spirit when it comes to being cold and dark. But he's not a talker. He doesn't call out threats. He doesn't threaten people. He doesn't trash talk. The speed of a Roy Jones Junior. We haven't seen anything else like it until now. So you have a combination of Roy Jones Junior, James Tony. My intellect, you may have some of the showmanship or the theater that I bring to the game, but he has that intellect. What is that intellect? Let's break it down. It's the knack of knowing how to win. He knows how to win. Not everybody knows how to win. They may be very good fighters, good boxers, good uh, tacticians, but knowing how to win is, is an instinct of which he has. The power. Many would say, who are boxing people, well, you know, he doesn't stop people. He doesn't knock them out cold with one punch. That's because of, uh, there's a reason why that is. He uses a lot of padding. So the knuckles, these two, are not actually connecting. So the, 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 the shots are, um, they're concussive, they're not sharp, and they're not, um, 
the bone structure isn't behind them, which is why these guys are actually getting hurt more because they're taking copious amounts of, of, of punishment and the referees, they think that they're okay, they're not. Which is why, as I say, and as I've said in the past, Junior is a very dangerous fighter and these guys are in danger because he's not taking them out. They're taking too much punishment because of the amount of, um, which is allowed. I mean, when I fought, I fought with, uh, my padding was about this much, which is why I knock people clean out. People are being more punished because of the, um, because of the, the gauze, the amount of gauze he's allowed to use. There are so many elements of this young man which hasn't been seen and the fantastic thing is that now it will be because not only will we have what they refer to as the 24-7 type scenario with ITV, you know, you are going to be on the inside in the training camps so you're going to see and hear the stringent ways in which um, we train and the way we build our young fighters. Look out for Harlem Eubank. Look out for Sebastian Eubank. This is what we do. We're not playing games. This is not part-time for us. Um, this is not a hobby. This isn't a game to us. You know, yes. Uh, normal people can't do what we do. Uh, so I hear a, a lot of your fans say, oh, the, the guy's deluded. Well, of course I am. You don't make 19-time world champion by being normal. You have to be deluded. Bring it. Let's talk about Golovkin. The fight, from a, an outside perspective, seemed to be within the grasp of uh, your son in September. The fight didn't happen. Kel Brook had the fight. We've heard from countless times from, from Eddie Hearn certain reasons why, not the complete reasons why, but certain reasons why that fight didn't take place as in regards to the negotiations. Um, you wanted Barry McGuigan to commentate. You wanted to double ticket prices. These were the words from Eddie Hearn about certain aspects of why the fight did not take place. So, okay, ticket prices. He advised us that if we didn't do the fight at Wembley and we did it at the O2, you could triple the ticket price. This is his advice to me. Eddie, say it isn't so. And if you do, you're a liar. And you are not really a liar. You know, you're a good guy. You're a nice guy, but you're in a game here and you're playing with one of the... one of the door openers. You have your job. You have your position. Matroom has his position because of the likes of myself. Say it isn't so. Come on. Barry McGuigan is commentator. What's wrong with that? Barry McGuigan is a legend in boxing. The man inspired me to want to actually be a champion, to be a standard bearer. Why not? These... I love... Hold on. Oh, let sorry. me... Oh, hold on. I, Bar I love Barry McGuigan. So, when I say love, I mean with my heart because here was a true warrior. You know, I saw a picture of Barry McGuigan coming into Ireland after he won the championship against uh, Pedroza. The picture was taken from a long distance away and he was on the top of a, uh, a double-decker bus. And there must have been hundreds of thousands of people. You couldn't see space in the street for, I don't know, that was like, to me, that was like, wow, it was like a, an epiphany. It was like, I want that. I want to do that. So. These people who are, why, why not have Bear McGuigan? Has he done something wrong? Isn't this the person who inspired you to actually get into boxing? What's wrong with Bear McGuigan? Not only that, I said that I would pay his fee. It wasn't, it wasn't coming out of anybody else's fee, out of any production from that room. Again, I don't like Bear McGuigan. I love him. And it's people like him who uh, 
who made, who helped people like me. And it's people like me who inspired people like you. People like you. So what is this thing with Barry McGugan? He's got a great voice, a great voice. There's another guy on Box Nation who should actually come across to ITV because, again, he has a great voice. And I'll be talking to you guys. This is boxing. It's entertainment. And the reason why it's so sexy is because you have two men who are objective about scoring enough points to win and so elevate their standard of living, their profile, and their notch on the warrior's ladder. But it seems it's been taken over by these guys who don't know anything about boxing. They know about promoting and making money. I'm an idealist. I am the way I'm supposed to be. I'm not thinking all the time money. I'm thinking about poise. I'm thinking about sequence. I'm thinking about combination punches, relentlessness, hurting my man, and then hurting him again, and then standing tall and being proud and trying to engage the public into my process. That's what interests me, I'm an idealist. I'm supposed to be the way I am. And these are the people, people like me, who are fighting. But you're hearing a different language from the people who know nothing about this. They know about using it to get money for themselves. That's why it should be very refreshing for you ITV viewers to hear from someone like me. It isn't your normal run-of-the-mill um, uh, gag. It isn't. You can hear that anytime uh, listening to uh, others. You need to hear from more fighters. And while we're on the subject of fighters, referees, why aren't fighters, former fighters, why aren't they referees? They would be far more protective than some of these people who don't know what it feels like to be in there. And all of these controversial subjects of which I'm speaking about is good for the game. It's good for the game. That's why I am Eubank. Just going back to the Baron McGuigan situation, the way it was suggested from Eddie Hearn was that it was a kind of deal breaker. If that wasn't to happen, the fight can't move forward. Is that true? Okay. Look at what you're saying. This is, this is fantastic. Look at what you're saying. That a fight between two of the... Two of the the best fighters in the world, Junior Unproven, Golovkin Proven, this should actually uh, balance on whether a commentator is involved. That's the way we've read that. No, no, but, yeah. but look at it. It's nonsensical. If I want, if I want Barry McGugan to be a commentator, that, should, that has no business in breaking a fight. It's dumb. That's like saying, well, you know what? If you're not going to have a... Heineken beer then, you're only going to have Stella, I, you know, it's, it's a deal breaker. It is stupid. And if he said that, he should be ashamed of himself. I can't believe he said that. I don't listen to a lot of what he says because I don't listen to nonsense. In short, we were swindled. But in swindling in us, he swindled himself. Because now he's not a part of uh, Team Eubank. And he has had three chances over five years to be with us, even though at the start of Junior's career, he announced that we were signing with him. He has been trying to be something he hasn't been ever in the time we've had any relationship. And he's not with us now, not because of me, but because of him. I said to him, get me the Golovkin fight. If you get me that fight, that will show me faith that perhaps we should be with you. Surely you can remember this. Yes, absolutely. And what did he do? He gave the fight to Kel because he said, and Barry Hearn said, and everyone has heard them both say, at pay-per-view level, the show is yours. It's your show. But when you try to actually manage the show, they say, oh, no, no, we didn't mean that. This is all uh, small-minded um, minutiae. That's a great word, minutiae. It's all small-minded minutiae which has lost them the ability to be with the best in the world. But I'm not talking just about ability. I'm talking about theatre. This is entertainment. They didn't have the vision. If they had the vision, they'd be with us, but they didn't. And it's also proven by his father. 
If his father had the vision, he would never have let me go. Why? Because I am a walking, talking, fighting, feeling, advertising machine for the great art and craft of the philosophy that is boxing. How do you let a man like me go? Okay, strike that. How do you actually not do a deal with a man like me, who has a son like I do? What, expecting my son to jump my ship? Impossible for a son who understands code to jump ship. Now this, you're gonna like. I have persevered over all these years with all of their swindling and underhanded tactics. And I never complain because it's the game. About three, four months ago, I knew I was going to Victor. Victor in what? In having my son have his own uh, platform. Let me tell you how I knew. I had a conversation with Barry Hearn. Barry said to me, if you want to get onto box office, there is no other way but by me. I've heard that before. He then said these words, and I quote, if Jesus Christ came down from heaven, he will not get onto pay-per-view without me. And that statement, at that point, I knew immediately that I was gonna win. Because you can't talk like that, Barry. It doesn't work. You know, this uh, force is omnipresent with so many. It works for them. And in actual fact, it's worked for me. Proven. ITV, Triple AP. All these maps to pleasure. Moving on, Chris, I want to I wanna talk to you about Billy Joe Saunders. Um, again, listening to Frank Warren, um, he says it's down to you and your team why this rematch hasn't happened yet. Why hasn't the rematch with Billy Joe Saunders happened yet, in your opinion? Or on your side? There are, there's two issues. The two issues, one of them is that it isn't the fighter. The fighter is a foregone clung, the fighter is a foregone conclusion in the fight in terms of the result. It's the management. And the management is The management is difficult to deal with. So for that fight to happen, difficult, impossible to deal with, impossible. Okay, I'm going to back that up. Impossible how? Well, he won't work with me. He won't talk to me. If you don't, if you can't, if you can't talk to the manager, then the fight can't happen. So. You know, if the fighter wants to fight Junior, then he's going to have to get rid of the, the manager who's being irresponsible and negligent. The fight can't be made because he has publicly said, and I hold him to his word, he will not ever deal with me. So it's for Billy Joe Saunders to find another promoter. And the wonderful thing is that ITV now is launching with Chris Eubank Jr. this platform. And so there may be a way forward now. But Billy, let me rephrase, the fighter should, through his management, make contact through somebody else because 
I don't know whether it's pride or um, bigotry, but somehow he, he doesn't want to. You can't. You can't. You, a fighter can't move if there's no one to negotiate with. So, so unfortunately for him, sorry, unfortunately for the public, there can be no fight because the promoter will not speak. So off you go. And Billy, if you want to fight, then you'll have to get someone else to speak to me. You just said there that his management, or are you talking about, are you referring to Frank Warren? When his management, said, yeah. I mean, this is, he, it, yeah, yeah, Frank, yeah. He's managed by uh, Macklin's Jim Marbert, but... Yes, but his promoter... Promoter, Frank Warren. It's Frank Warren, yeah. We know that Frank Warren uh, and Eddie Hearn are not the greatest of friends, but they both brand you as impossible to deal with, impossible to work with. Um, of course, because they... Um, because they want to do to my son what they did to me. And I will not allow that. You do realize that this, all of this rhetoric is born of these two men. Why? It's money. They want the energy and the skill sets and the attraction and the magnetism of Junior. And so they will do everything to, it seems that they are trying to do everything to undermine me. But these are just two people. Um, they can bark as much as they want. It doesn't really matter. I mean, have you ever seen a, a dog bark as a flying, a flying bird? It doesn't make any sense. It's not going to do them any good. You know, Junior is with his management team. His management team, I'm the patriarch of that, the father of it. What did you expect? You know, we don't roll over to have our tummies tickled by these people. Expecting that is like expecting to actually wake up with a tan as dark as mine if you go on holiday for two or three days. That's not going to happen. Why does Eddie Hearn say that if your son was in the room when the negotiations for the Golovkin fight, which never happened, if he was in the room, the fight would have happened? Why does he say that? I don't know what's in another Why do you believe mind? him to say that? That if Chris, was, Chris Jr. was in the room when these negotiations were going on, mm. this fight would have taken place, taken place rather. I don't know why he would say that, but I will say this to you. When has any fighter of his that he looks after ever been in the room when he's been negotiating fights on their behalf? The fighter fights. The manager and the promoter does the negotiations and the fighter trusts them to get on with it. As my son, my fighter trusts me to get on with it. We got swindled out of that fight. But as I said, they swindled themselves because now they're not a part of me. I mean, even the British Championship fight against uh, Nick Blackwell, you know, he said he would win the purse bid. He said, That's a, it's, a, it's a piece of cake, no problem. He lost it, how do you lose the purse bid for a fight with Chris Eubank Jr. when you've got Sky behind you. It doesn't make sense. He didn't care about that fight and he expected us to stay with him. Us, me, no. As I said to him, work with me and we'll be able to work together. If you don't, then you're on your own. And now he can do what he's doing. Good luck. Do you still see a relationship with Junior uh, with either Frank Warren or Eddie Hearn in the future. We know that the, uh, the idea for the foreseeable future is to be with ITV and the pay-per-view they're launching. But do you see still some sort of future in the, whenever that may be, with Eddie Hearn still and Frank Warren, who Chris Jr. has both worked with? Mm. Oh. Jr. hasn't worked with them. I have. Junior is a fighter. Uh, you know, he does what it says on the tin. He's not a negotiator. Um, you know, he may not understand the numbers. He may not understand his rights, like his TV rights and his eye, uh, intellectual property rights. He may not understand any of that. He's a fighter, and so he has his team, Unity Motion, um, Team New Bank, um, and Blue Trinity. Johnny Took as our lawyer. You know. We do 
that part. So when he says if Junior was in the room, what he's trying to do is undermine me to have Junior come straight to him. But Junior is no dog. He isn't a dog. He is his father's son. He has the principles that he should have, which is let the team do the business. And he has done. And now look where he's sitting. The platform he's now on puts into perspective how 10 times smaller that platform is to what ITV is. 10 times. You do realize that, don't you? I'm taking that from something I've read from you yesterday. Well, now do your research. I will, I will. I'm not gonna say I know that, because I don't. Not, so only, not only do your research, you the viewer, please, uh, research it. Why? Because, because I didn't roll over and have them tickle my tummy. I love that term, it's a beautiful term. Can you imagine me rolling over and letting them, oh, go on, go on, tickle my tummy. <laughs> Can you imagine that? A man like me, I was never gonna roll over for them. Even if I wanted to do, I couldn't. My duty as a father doesn't allow. When you hear people say to you, Chris, that you're too involved in your son's career and you should take a step back and also around the Golovkin fight that you basically, in layman's terms, cost your son the Golovkin fight. Uh, the chance of between three and four million pound estimated. Uh, what, what do you respond to and say to that? The first thing I say is this. Being involved, step back. Okay, no soldier goes to war without a general being involved. The, the general gives the directions. Is that a good way to put it? I mean, have you seen a soldier say, I'm going to go and actually, uh, you know, I'm going to go and protect this group of people on my own accord. That's called a vigilante. Okay, they usually have a general. There has to be a general, one general, and then you have the, um, the soldiers who then carry out the duty of what the general says. So it's only that I'm a general. There's, you, can't, you can't ask a general to step aside. Once a general steps aside, you have disorder. We need order. Not counter order. A counter order comes when um, there isn't one general. We need order. Okay, and so therefore, um, where you're asking me this particular question, stepping back is madness. You know, it's like having a it's like having a 13 year old girl talk to a 45 year old man. No. Don't send your daughter out into Soho if she's 13 years old. She will be misused. Always protect your children. Always protect your, uh, your loved ones uh, or your business. You protect your business. So when he says, you know, if I wasn't there, it would have been done. It would have been done, but it would have cost Junior because he doesn't know how to protect himself. Now this is the new age of boxing. The great thing about Chris Eubank, it may not appeal to those two promoters, but it will appeal to all those other fighters out there living what I lived. This language will protect them. It will um, make them wise to what they have. Without them, nothing else works. The promoter acts like they're important. They're not. Don King wouldn't be Don King without Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali. Barry Hearn wouldn't exist in boxing without a guy called Mr. Eubank. It just wouldn't have happened. He would have been swallowed up by the Mickey Duffs and the Jarvis and Stairs and the Frank Warrens. You need a figurehead. So what I do is sound. I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay, but the language you're always hearing is from the people who are making money on our backs. The children have been put through school on our backs. They have uh, beautiful houses and they drive expensive cars on our backs. What I'm doing 
with Junior, if I can actually free him and have him work for and get from his uh, own work ethic, so it belongs to him, then it will also teach other fighters to do the same. Nothing wrong with that. And obviously that's going to be my remit. Why? Because I am a former participant of this great game. Is what is going on now to do with your son solely, Chris Uber Jr., or is it to do with you and your son? Because people combine the pair of you as a package when it's your son who is the current fighter. So what, 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 are, we, what are we buying into here? Are we buying into the, the, the Eubank name as, that comes with Junior and Senior? Or is this solely about your son and what he does in the ring? It is solely about what he does in the ring because if you can't fight, you have to leave the building. Now there's an element of narrative. Narrative. He is my son. Um, I put him through school. Um, when he was born, I was the first man to hold him. Huh? Uh, and by the way, when he came out, he, he was weaving. He was. I promise. I'm the one who paid for the milk and the holidays and the schooling and the clothes and uh, taking them to school. Doesn't matter that it was in my truck, I still took them to school. I did this. What do you mean step back? What do you mean... Then who else should be next to him? I read comments, as do you, Chris. You take a, a more of an active uh, role in social media now. And it's what I just perceive to be what people say. But look, um, if, if I was with him in, in the thin, then in the thick, am I supposed to leave? As I said, I mean, look, you know, it wasn't anybody else helping him. I think they're so, referring you know, to things like when you go into the corner... Uh, when so you what, wasn't really meant to. So, so, so you think that there's another man who is more qualified than me to be giving well, advice at, on... At the specific time, he had, had Ronnie there. Yeah. So, um, and, and, I'm and not saying you shouldn't have been Ron, there. I'm Hold saying... On. Oh, you're talking about the, the fans who say... I'm saying, yeah, people think what, you know, the response was, what on earth is Eubank Senior doing in the ring? Let me ask you a question. What on earth? Anyone who would say that, it's almost as though they don't understand that I was a fighter, that I had been in the position in which my son sits when he's sitting in the corner. Whereas the trainers, who what? They are more qualified than me? Look, at least give me the respect to say that they may be as qualified. But don't say that they're more qualified than me. They haven't been in there. They don't know what it feels like in the first round when nothing went right. They don't know what it feels like to be exhausted, battered and beaten and want to quit and walk away and get out of the situation. They don't know. I do. And what I can tell you, for anyone who just heard that, is when you are and you do feel like that, your opponent, don't forget, feels exactly the same way. So my knowledge and the information that I have from my experience, not that I read it or saw it done or hung around gyms looking, I was in the gym working, I put it on the line. And so therefore, who more qualified than me? So it's, the question is, it doesn't make sense. It's actually, it's actually a stupid question. I'm not calling anybody stupid because no one has actually put that to me directly. But it is a stupid question to ask. There isn't anyone more qualified than me. I can show you pictures of my eye like this. Uh, and blood seeping out of it. You know, I'm blessed with a EQ and IQ, uh, observational skill sets, being able to articulate these perceptions. Who more qualified than me? And 
what I'd like you to do is bring that person to me. Let them sit with me. And I will politely have them bow, nod their heads like this and say, Mr. Eubank. And they will, because they can't know what I know. I don't call myself the big I am, but I have lived this. 24 world championship fights. Those five losses, some of them hurt. That Watson 2 fight I went through. Getting up off the floor when I couldn't. Anyone who's going to say, why am I there? They're asking a question that doesn't make sense. It is stupid. Bring it. I want to ask you about when you first announced your association with, uh, with Matchroom, uh, obviously notably Adam Booth was on the table at the time. Uh, Can I just stop you there? Yeah, go on. If you go back five years ago, mm -hmm. November, Junior fought November the 12th in his first fight. In about October, you will, you will find even now where there is a promoter saying that he's signing with us. This conversation never happened. And this, what was disseminated to the public, may have actually damaged us in a way where uh, Nero Liff, from a, from a mental point of view, it may have told people that, oh, he's already taken already. Putting out there that we were with Matrim. These people have been trying to actually take my young man away from me for five and a half years. Five years. Even before he was, he was pro. So, um, now, um, all we want is a fair, all we ever wanted was a fair playing field. One of which I deserved for my son, who did, as, who did what I did for you, Barry. What I did for you. I mean, I feel what I did for you. How do you leave? How do you leave me out in the cold like you did? And how do you have your son stress me like he did? How do you do that? Where is, where is the heart? Where is, where is the feeling? And I am still shocked. Am I hurt? No. Why? Because I've been used it to actually benefit my, my fighter. So actually I thank you because out of this I have persevered so that took what is referred to as tenacity. It took nerve to hold myself during this tough time that you didn't help me in. I'm not against you. I'm grateful for the hardship that you've allowed me to learn that the world can be a very unattractive place when you trust and when you expect karma from the good that you did. Karma. Wow. You, you're incredible, man. In the positive, because I don't take any negative from this. You have allowed me to effectively win another world championship in as much as with this deal that we have done, which has taken so long to, long to put together, I now walk around and I feel 15 feet tall. 17, okay, 18. I feel tall. So I thank you for testing me, testing my resolve, testing my fortitude. I'm grateful. And the fighters listening to this should make you aware of what you're dealing with. But not everybody has the spirit to never roll over and have their tongues tickled. Chris, uh, just briefly, I know you have to go. And can you just, uh, my original question was, could you explain to us why uh, Junior's relationship with Adam Booth was such a short one in a nutshell why that was well um, in all honesty um, well okay if I'm going to be honest what I heard because I wasn't in the gym Junior made a decision Adam Booth left the gym he left and I haven't seen him since and I haven't spoken to him since 
and this is this was maybe what a year and a half ago yeah. I haven't spoken to him since uh, he's never explained anything to me remember I was paying him or he was being paid so I don't know why he left no sorry I do know why I told him at the start of the relationship I said you'll be good for junior but to keep junior uh, you should do as follows I says remember this is not a horse this is a stallion so uh, his attitude it doesn't want it junior doesn't want to do what you say he has his own mind he's a maverick very difficult to control what you mustn't do is ever lose him the way you lose him is by asking him if he wants to do something direct him and if you direct him you'll always be able to keep him or keep his respect so I told him how to manage Junior because he's a you know he's a he's a he's a makeup of chemicals and he needs to be managed so you know, with the best intentions I gave him this advice I remember him saying to me, no, Junior's a thoroughbred. And with thoroughbred, sometimes what you do is walk away and they follow. I get that. And I said, mm, okay. Because I didn't, I didn't process it that he's not a thoroughbred. And he isn't, he's a stallion. And my job is to stay on him while he bucks. And he's bucking, and he's always bucking. This is not easy. It's not easy to look after Junior. Which is why Adam Booth left the gym. He left. So ask him why he left. Then he can give you the story. What? You didn't give a decision, and so what? Were your feelings hurt? That Junior gave the decision? It was something to do with a aspiring partner wanting to rest for one minute, and Junior has 30 seconds rest. The fighter said, the aspiring partner said, it's going to be one minute, otherwise I'm going to leave. Junior said, then leave. The guy got out of the ring, he left. Adam Booth walked out of the gym. That is a cardinal sin, sin amongst fighters. You can never leave your fighter. You always stay on his back. You always stay with him. Always. Adam Booth walked away from, in my view, one of the best fighters on the planet, if not the best, which I mean to prove, or have Junior prove, in the not too distant future, starting with ITV pay-per-view, um, come this February um, and the journey is going to be fresh thank you so much Chris Eubank Senior are we still to refer to you as English I, or I, either or I like English English thank you very much for giving us a, a great deal of your time tonight tonight it started off in a day it's moved into tonight sure um, very appreciative to you and your son today for your time and uh, we'll catch up with you again ahead of the build up to Feb 4th on ITV pay per view yeah. and we are um, we are happy to speak uh, we are happy to talk you know my father was old school and so you know um, shirt and tie uh, please and thank yous, manners and respecting your elders, all of these things we were taught. And so when things were said, you know, we're professionals. We can't be seen to be talking to ragtags, which is how you were behaving, which you uh, accepted all those four years ago. But now it's a new day and we're happy to talk. And, you know, I hope, okay, I hope that this sense that I think I've made resonates and lastly I will leave you with I hope that you never like Chris Eubank Jr. We don't want him to be liked. Either you love him or you do the opposite because he should evoke no other emotions one or the other. <laughs>